All right, guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we're going to be looking at budget FPV. Stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, with so many quadcopters out there nowadays in the toy grade category, uh, touting first person view or FPV capability, it's really kind of difficult to decide which is best. Now, most of the ones you're going to find in the probably uh, 25 to, dare I say, close to $100 range are going to utilize the 2.4 gigahertz signal to get that uh, signal from the camera on board back to the smart device. Issue with that, guys, is the 2.4 gigahertz signal um, is going to be the same signal that's emanated from the remote control to control the actual quadcopter when it's in the air. Therefore, you're going to have issues with connectivity. You're going to have issues with uh, dropped frames. Uh, you're going to have issues with, you know, possible flyaways, things like that that can really degrade the FPV experience and your actual uh, flight range and things like that. So what we're looking at today is true FPV uh, in the sense that this is 5.8 gigahertz, completely different uh, frequency, a uh, frequency that's designed for using uh, uh, for this application of first person view. I'm going to show you a couple of components today guys that I personally use or that, that I just got recently and we're going to go over um, those components, how to set up your FPV system for the first time, how to get it up and running and what to expect from something like this. So without further ado, first thing on, we're going to be looking at is obviously uh, the phone. So now the phone or whatever device you're going to be using uh, has to be compatible with an OTG or on-the-go uh, uh, connectivity. In other words, when you plug something in like a flash drive or a um, thumbnail drive, something like that, it's going to recognize that and actually be able to transfer files back and forth through the USB uh, on the phone. So in other words, on the bottom of the phone here where the uh, micro USB is. Now this is a uh, compatible device. Uh, this is an LG, I forget the model of it, but it's a 5.5 uh, 5 .5 inch screen. Um, it is an LG phone. I think I got it at a Boost Mobile or something. Yeah, it's Boost, I believe. Uh, but any, any phone that's compatible uh, with the uh, OTG will work for this application. What we're going to be doing is using a 5.8 uh, gigahertz receiver. Now you can purchase this on Amazon.com or eBay. I'll put a link in the description for one of these in the uh, uh, in, in the video on the bottom here and you guys can make a decision on what you want it to go with. But these are roughly about $29. Uh, sometimes a little less expensive. Uh, this one I paid uh, $21 and some change on eBay and they're available pretty much all over. Uh, different brand names on these. This is probably made in the same factory that some of the other ones are made in. There's just no brand name ink on here. It's just kind of a no-name um, item right here. But what you're going to get with this is you're going to get a 5.8 gig, gigahertz uh, uh, kind of a, a router antenna that screws onto the top here. Okay, so that screws up on the top here. And then I have a button on the front here, guys, oh, before we get into that. Um, you're also going to get this little uh, micro USB to micro USB uh, connector cable to actually connect this to your smart device. Um, we'll go ahead and connect that back on the bottom here for now. Um, on the front here, guys, you're going to have a channel selector switch on here, and this is going to be a multi-channel uh, receiver. So you're going to get up to 150 channels of uh, different uh, 5.8 frequency uh, bands or widths or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so this is going to have a wide range of adaptability for you. Uh, very easy to hook up. Uh, you would just download download an app called um, uh, Go FPV uh, off either iOS or the Android uh, Google Play Store and uh, and use that on your phone in conjunction with this. We'll get into that a little bit later, but this is basically the unit that you're going to be getting. Uh, pretty small, pretty compact. And I've got a Velcro pad on the back here, and I'll show you how I connect that uh, to my goggles in just a second. Um, that's going to be one of our main components, obviously, to get uh, FPV from the camera to the uh, actual uh, smart device. You need that kind of interface there, and this is this is a very uh, very effective. Uh, little unit right here. Now, the next thing we're going to be looking at is a camera. Now this is just a camera I purchased on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description. There's many different cameras you can get. This one is a uh, very short range, probably about 200 feet. Um, I'm not planning on doing any really long distance FPV flying um, and 
uh, in hindsight being 2020, I could have got one uh, that was more switchable uh, for different distances. But this is a 25, uh, I think it was MV, I'm not quite sure. And I'll put that, I'll fix that in the uh, post edit there to let you know exactly which what, which one this is and uh, its, uh, its compatibility. Uh, but this is going to come with basically the camera itself. You're going to have this small dipole antenna that's included with it. It's already attached. Um, and then it's going to have a um, adapter cable here. And this is going to go from a uh, mini low C or micro uh, kind of a kind of a um, tiny whoop style battery connector to um, an actual um, uh, white small white low C that you're going to see on a lot of uh, one cell batteries uh, and that's where you're going to get your power from. Now I went ahead and I, and I uh, hot glued this down to a small foam pad and then I have a velcro pad underneath to attach to uh, the actual quadcopter. So we'll show you that in just a second as well but these are about anywhere from probably $15 on up to about 30 or 40 depending on what you're going to be looking at. Um, I'm going to recommend you guys get one that's switchable uh, for different distances um, and that's really going to help you out a lot. Um, on the back here just to show you real quick there is a uh, small um, little LED uh, panel on here and then your channel selector switch is going to be up on top there. So we'll get into that in a little bit uh, but that's one another major component that you guys are going to need for this. Then obviously a way to power that. What I'm using here is a 3.7 volt uh, this is a 280 milliamp hour uh, battery with the same type of connector on it. And I also have Velcro on here. And this is going to attach to the underbody of the quad copter that we're going to be looking at today. Now obviously to do this you can do it one of two ways. You can either use uh, like uh, virtual reality goggles that I have here. Or you can set yourself up just with the device that you're going to be broadcasting on. And then pop this up in some, some sort of holder. And you can actually watch it monitor it that direction in that way but because this app will allow you to do a vir true virtual reality split screen um, I decided I was I wanted to learn by actually using goggles now these are pretty inexpensive guys I actually got these with my uh, quadcopter that I purchased and I believe that was the um, Promark Shadow GPS drone this came in the package with it yeah these are the Promarks uh, very easy to set up very easy to use there's really nothing to it but to get the app going on the phone and then slip the phone inside here and you're pretty much off to the races so um, stick with me for just a second guys I'm going to pause this and we're going to go ahead and start getting the setup and I'll show you how this works all right, guys, the first thing we're going to need to do is determine which quadcopter we're going to be using for this application. It's important that you choose a quadcopter that's going to be able to handle the payload of not only the camera, but the battery that's going to hang underneath of it. Now, you can see that we're using today the Visuo. Uh, this is the uh, XS809HW. This is a uh, Mavic clone, I guess you could call it. It's a folding arm quad. Um, really nice little flyer, guys. Um, I don't have a review up for this one. There's so many out there right now. All you have to do is just search uh, Visuo um, Mavic clone, and this one will pop up. There's many, many reviews. Um, anyway, um, I chose this one uh, for the ease of flying because it does have altitude hold on it um, and it hovers really, really well. The barometer is really, very good on this uh, particular qu uh, toy quadcopter. What I've done on here, guys, is I've gone ahead and I've put, put a couple of Velcro patches on here. This is the actual uh, loop side here on that on the top and I've actually installed more loop on the bottom. What I tried to achieve in this, guys, is to equalize the weight of not only the battery uh, the, the, that powers the quadcopter in the back, but also the camera and the outboard battery that's going to power, power our FPV camera. Um, I tried to equalize that weight throughout the fuselage of the quadcopter so it's not pitching or acting funnier. So it's just flying the way it should fly. And I'm pretty sure that I have achieved that uh, through testing on this. I had it out today and I was testing it and everything seems to be good on it. So um, let's go ahead and start getting this set up and get it ready to use for FPV. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is take our camera and uh, again, I showed you the camera earlier. Uh, I have it mounted on this uh, little pad here, and then I've got um, I've got a hook uh, Velcro on the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and line this up forward on here. You guys can see this, I hope. And we're going to press this on, and I press it on, 
and I'll take it and just kind of rock it back and forth to make sure those that hook and loop is making a good connection there and the bat and the camera's not going to come off um, and it's on there pretty tight next thing we're going to do is turn the quadcopter over and being careful not to set it down on the dipole you don't want to bend that up a too, too much uh, you could have issues going forward uh, with breaking the connection on that antenna and here we're going to actually set the set the um, uh, cable our connector cable underneath uh, right across the velcro pad here and this is actually going to hold let me sorry about that guys this is actually going to hold everything in place uh, for us and keep it out of the wing uh, out of the propellers uh, when it's spinning so we're going to go ahead and put our battery um, on the bottom here we're going to center that on the pad and again same way I usually take it and I rock it back and forth to make sure that hook and loop is making a good connection and then from there we can go ahead and make our connection here now I'm holding this up a little bit higher here so I'm not bending that dipole antenna in the back um, and we can go ahead and give us give it the connection um, right here and we'll go ahead and get this guy connected A lot easier when you don't have a camera in front of you here, but I think we're gone to it right now. There we go. It took a little longer than I wanted it to, but I think we've got it set up. And you can see on the antenna here, or actually on the um, on the LED on the back, little LED screen, we can see that we're on channel one. Um, on here and everything is pretty much set up now I preset this uh, to work with my setup, but that's basically how it's going to look so we've got our um, FPV camera mounted in the front here um, you're going to get a little prop uh, pro a little bit of the props in the picture but that's okay as far as I'm concerned as long as I can see what's going on in front of me um, when I'm flying this that makes me all the happier um, underneath you can see we've got the battery with the cable routed underneath against the actual velcro uh, to kind of sandwich it between the battery and the fuselage there to keep the uh, wire um, out of the way of the props so that seems to work out pretty good now there'll be guys out there that will take rubber bands and rubber band them on there and do all of that kind of stuff i just figured that this was going to be the easiest way to do it um, and i just this is the way this is kind of the way i, I chose to do it um, the next thing we're going to do we'll set this aside just for a second guys the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get our um, smart device and uh, we're going to open turn on the smart device I think it might already be on okay we'll go ahead and let that power up I'll let this power up guys and I'll get to the app and I'll be right back all right guys I've got the phone all set up here and the uh, home screen in front of us what we're looking uh, for right now is the app called go FPV and we're going to go ahead and click on that app go ahead and open it up here and it's telling us here uh, this device to this device device excuse me appears to have a UVC driver plug in your adapter or camera to begin so now we're going to go ahead and take our actual um, receiver and we're going to go on the bottom and we're going to uh, match up the orientation of the cable to the bottom here to the micro USB connector and we're going to plug it in and now it's asking us oh, okay let's go back this way one more time I wanted to show you guys this it's asking us up to uh, a permission to allow the app uh, to access U USB device upon startup uh, so we're gonna go ahead and hit use by default and hit OK and there we go now you can see we're in split screen right now so at this point once you're in the split screen setup like this and you can see that we do have we do have uh, Wi-Fi FPV okay so everything is working right now uh, this app is going to give us some options here guys for not only using the split screen option uh, which is going to be this icon right here but we can also use the full view okay uh, and expand that as well to take the whole screen I believe there's an expanding on here. 
Oh, that is expanded already, okay. And there's also a record button on here too, so you can record uh, your flights inside the app and it will save directly to your, um, your camera roll or your gallery uh, inside your phone. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing there. But today we're gonna be talking about FPV, so we're gonna go on the split screen again. Um, then we're gonna go ahead now and insert the phone inside of our goggles and I'll show you how that all works out in just a second, guys. Stick with me. All right, guys, so all we have to do on these particular goggles is just pop them open from the top here, and then our smart device would fit right inside, and I'll show you how that works uh, on these, uh, this particular setup. So you're just gonna set them in, uh, however they fit inside your goggles, whichever goggles you're using, and we're gonna go ahead and close those over uh, the phone. And now inside here, and I know it's tough to see, we're going to have our split screen, but uh, via the actual adjustability of these lenses inside here, uh, you're going to be able to get that, that complete split, split screen brought into one, uh, one, one uh, uh, view. So you're going to have a single view uh, of the uh, quadcopter uh, in flight. And I'll show you how the, um, the uh, receiver is actually attached on here again i'm using the velcro again this seems to work out good for me this is industrial velcro you can purchase at walmart um, any any hardware stores have it uh, this is the real velcro brand stuff uh, it's uh, got a 15 pound weight uh, weight pull on it so it will withstand 15 pounds of pressure and on here i will just take and do the same thing with my hook and loop on both of these and that's pretty much it so that's the final result there, what it looks like, guys. Um, you're going to have your FPV camera um, set up on top of the quadcopter, and you're going to have your receiver uh, right here on the actual uh, goggles here. So you're able to uh, fly FPV. Um, I usually take my uh, antenna and tilt it off a little bit this way because the signal is going to come out on the flat side uh, towards the dipole antenna on the actual quadcopter. That's pretty much it guys. Pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to use. Uh, there are instructions uh, inside the package for the uh, camera itself. Kind of difficult to understand. Plenty of instructions online. I'll put links in the description for all this stuff as well as the visual uh, quadcopter. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Thanks for subscribing. Um, if you guys have any questions, put them down in the comments section below. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Please, guys, subscribe if you would. That really helps my channel out a lot. And we'll see you all in the next one. God bless the Republic.